Hey everyone, Liam here. This week's video, we're going to be covering how to paint an Imperial Fist at a good tabletop level, as always with no airbrush. If you get any questions, if you've got any feedback, please leave them in the comments below. If the video is helpful and you do like it, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to support me and you want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon for additional, more in-depth, more advanced video tutorials, as well as one-to-one -one tuition options. If you want anything painted on commission, Feel free to check out all the links below to get in touch and I'll definitely be able to help you out. As always, I hope this is helpful and here we go. So the first step for this, the model needs to be primed white. Any other color I find for white will give the yellow a hint of green and it will be incredibly difficult to cover. So the model is primed white. All of the details that I don't want to be yellow at this point, I've also painted black just because I find it easier to paint those details black now rather than once when all the yellow is down because it's much harder to fix the when you paint the black and if you go over the yellow it's much harder to fix so I prefer to do that now it's entirely up to you the yellow that I'm using is P3 Signar yellow and the idea with this is, is the paint is thinned down enough so it leaves as opaque a mark as possible while still being transparent and not influencing any of the texture of the model itself. So we're not going to lose any of that detail. So in this case, it's probably thinned down to one part water to one part paint. And then I have needed to go over on, I have needed two coats to go over the whole of this model to make sure that I get as nice a flat finish as possible. Now, two coats is not always the right amount. It depends on the paint that you're using. It depends how much you thin your paint. One thing that I would say is if you thin your paint too much, that's much better than not thinning it enough. So if you're unsure, thin it a little bit more and do more coats. The base coat is incredibly important for this. You want a nice solid yellow across the model. Try not to go over the black just because that means you've got more to fix later. I do very quickly start getting a little bit lazy um, and not worrying about it too much. So I'd probably say just be a bit more careful than I am. So the next step is for us to shade this armor. Now with yellow, ideally you need to be really careful because yellow is an incredibly weak color. It's very easily covered. So I'm not doing much of a jump in shadow first. I'm picking out an orange. This is Vallejo model color orange red. I like Vallejo model color because it's quite an opaque paint. It's got some nice strength to it. So I don't have to put too much. I don't have to do too many layers. But I am thinning this quite heavily. This would be the equivalent of what people call a glaze. This is thinned down to four or five parts water to one part paint. And I'm very quickly running, brushing that orange over this yellow in the shadow areas. And I'm moving my brush towards the 
the darkest areas of this model. Now, normally painting this may, this way for an entire army would be incredibly slow, but with yellow, because you don't need to go too dark, actually the time you save in not pushing your shadows to an incredibly dark value makes this kind of process much more worthwhile and you'll get a very fast um, you'll get a very fast finish, a very fast process. And I mean, the thing with Space Marines as well, because the main thing that you need to do is focus on painting the armor. As long as you have a really good looking armor, that's the main feature of the model. You don't really have to worry too much about the how well painted the details are because no one's really going to be looking at them. And remember, this is a tabletop finish. So you can clearly see that I'm building up these colors until I get that nice deep orange. Now, it's worth noting that I'm doing it multiple times. So when I put the orange down, it's not entirely, um, it's, all it's doing is tinting that yellow and it's kind of getting warmer and warmer as we go. So I'm constantly going over these areas until I get to the darkness, the shade that I like. And you can see the shield, I've, sh I've put the shadow towards the top of the shield that's just the finish that I like so again it's entirely down to you you can really push yellow all the way down to a really dark brown that's not something that I wanted to do on this because I don't feel like it's really needed I wanted that nice warm finish The other thing that you might see me doing is, especially on the shoulder pads, I'm putting down a fair amount of that orange and I'm leaving quite a, a rough edge and then I'm rubbing the edge of it off where it transitions into the yellow. The idea with that is I'm still using the incredibly thin paint, I'm just putting a little bit more paint on the model and then I'm washing my brush and then I'm rubbing it along the edge of where that almost like a coffee stain of that orange where that orange meets the yellow um, and I'm rubbing that out so I'm rubbing my brush from side to side with a wet clean paintbrush and what that does is it leaves obviously the harder the the more opaque orange in that shadow area but it gets rid of that coffee stain that edge that you'll see it's just a sped up way of doing what I've already shown you if you are looking to try that then by all means go for it it will speed things up it is a bit more of an advanced process so go with what you're comfortable with but i mean if you're doing an army like this you'll probably find like the first 10 of them take you quite a while until you get it down and then once you get past that point once you get this into a routine these can be really really fast especially for when you compare it to any other process or a high quality finish without having an airbrush. The only way that you'll do this quicker is if you just have a flat color or if you're using an airbrush.
So next part of the process is relatively simple. We're going to go back to that P3 yellow. And because yellow is such a weak color, you don't really need to thin it down too much in this. It's probably two parts water to one part paint. But the idea is those yellow areas that we still want bright, that we don't want the shadows over. I'm just going to reinforce those from when maybe I've made a little bit of a mess or some of the more dodgy transitions. So some of the more questionable brush marks that I might have left. This yellow is really handy just to be able to go over those marks with a transparent paint. And what you'll probably find is the majority of those marks will disappear. If you've got any that are too prominent, don't worry about it. We'll fix that with a little bit of weathering later on assuming you're happy to do that. If not, this is the stage where you need to smooth out those marks. Shouldn't take too long as long as you've been fairly careful with that previous orange shadow stage. So next up is our highlight for the yellow. Now we can't make yellow any brighter. Generally speaking, if you've got a nice bright yellow, that's as bright as it's gonna go, or rather as saturated as it's gonna go. So we need to desaturate it. We need to add more white to bring up that value. So in this case, I'm using Velo model color beige. So it's basically a bit of um, like a, a yellowy white. It's a nice bridge between pure white and a yellow. So. The paint consistency is exactly the same. The idea with this is I'm picking out the areas that I want to highlight. I want to make sure though, that I still have a lot of this original yellow because remember we're desaturating this now. So if we cover too much of the yellow, we're gonna end up with a beige looking armor. The idea of this is, is we want very small areas in this armor to be pushed to this bright beige and we want to keep it nice and thin. Now with this, we do need to be a little bit careful. The reason for that is, is the closer we get towards more of a white, the more chalky our paint can become. So take it easy with this, thin the paint enough, make sure you have removed any of that excess from the brush. And we wanna to work towards, we want our brush strokes to go towards the areas that we want as our brightest point. So try to plan your brush strokes so they're going towards wherever our highlight is going to be, wherever our brightest point on that part of the model is going to be. And we're also gonna start picking out our edges here. Ed edge highlighting is incredibly important, especially when it comes to Space Marines because it frames everything. It makes the miniature readable. It makes it very defined. It's really important, especially when it comes to tabletop um, gaming pieces because it makes it readable from afar so make sure you do your edge highlights as I said this is Vallejo model color beige and then we're going to do exactly the same thing 
uh, with an even smaller area, but we're going to push that with Vallejo model color ivory, which is basically an off white. We're going to have some really, really tiny highlight areas with that Vallejo model color white, uh, ivory, sorry. So the next set of details I'm going to show, I'm going to really speed up the footage here because there's nothing overly complicated about it. I've repainted all of the details black so we get a good idea of what that yellow looks like and it gives me a good base coat for everything that I'm now painting. So the silver was laid down, it's scale 75 thrash metal, uh, which is a lot like the old lead belcher, uh, the old gun, gun, bun, bolt gun metal, sorry. <laughs> From GW and the red that I've put over is P3 Scorn Red I believe it is no it's a P3 Cadore Red and the skull colors is Valero model color beige so I've kept in with the same color that I used in that yellow and those are the colors that I pretty much used on this once those base coats are down on all of the details I've used a GW non oil wash I've gone over everything with it the only thing that you need to know is when I put that wash over it I've removed with a dry brush any pools of of wash that might have sat anywhere so it doesn't look messy and then after that I've gone over all of those colors with exactly the same color the same thrash metal the same Cador Red, um, the same beige from Velo Model Color, and I've highlighted those. But the Null Noils made it darker, so when we go back over it, it gives us a nice shape. So that's pretty much what I've done. I've just edge highlighted everything. Haven't done anything crazy with it. Remember, as long as the armor looks good, the details don't really matter. This is a tabletop quality Space Marine. So... The last thing that I do want to show you before we move on to how to paint the face is how we're painting the hair and the shoulder pads. I've used exactly the same colors. All I've got is some black and white and I've mixed up some gray. So where these shoulder pads and where the hair is base coated black, I've mixed up a gray and with the hair, I've painted lots of little lines towards the front of his hair where it meets the face on that curve, just so it's brightened up around that area but for all intents and purposes the rest of the hair is just jet black you only really need one highlight to bring it to life the other thing is is where our highlight is on that shoulder pad in the yellow you can see the bright spot that we've created in exactly the same space uh, in the exact same position sorry i've put a gray highlight all the way across that shoulder pad so it's consistent with the yellow highlight that will help with the believability it's not too bright but it's bright enough and then what we're going to do is we're going to after that we're going to add a edge highlight of gray all over those all around the edges on those shoulder pads because that will define the gray sh the trim and it will it will give it shape and again it will add readability to a model and that's incredibly important important whether you're display painting or whether you're army painting
So next up, we're going to add some weathering. I decided to add chip in to this because yellow is a very difficult color to really get a nice smooth transition without spending a huge amount of time. So I thought it would be really beneficial to add some weathering so I could just demonstrate the potential power of it to hide some of the more dodgy marks. So this foam that I have here, this is from a really old carry case that I can that, that I had or carry in models, but you can also use like blister sponge and that sort of stuff. So the intention here is I've ripped off any of the the flat edge because I want something relatively random. I also want a bit of a point on it. Probably what I would recommend to be honest with you is if you are going to do this, do this battle damage before you paint all of the details because potentially you're going to make a lot of mess on what you've already painted. So that would be the better um, that would be the better option. It's just not the way that I do it. So before you paint all of the details, do this on the yellow armor. So you can first of all see there, those marks are really quite strong. That's because there's too much paint on this sponge for what I want and I've pressed too hard on my hand. So the idea being I want to press a lot softer so I have a much smaller mark and I have something far more random. There's lots of different sizes there. And then if you press incredibly hard, obviously, as you can see there on the left, you're just going to get this massive smudge. So Keep dabbing this sponge off the model until you get a pattern that you're happy with, with the amount of marks that you're happy with, because this is going to determine how heavily weathered your actual armor panels are. And you can see that with the examples there, you've got quite a few options. I didn't want too much weathering on this. I just wanted enough to show that it wasn't, that he wasn't straight out of the workshop, let's say. So the idea here is I'm focusing on areas that might receive some kind of chipping or weathering. So generally speaking, I'm looking at knees, shins, um, shoulder pads, and more specifically, any areas that are around the edges or around the outside of this model. Now, you'll see the on the thigh, on that leg, there's that, that mark, that set of chips on that leg, I'm not particularly a fan of. It was far too much. But this is the danger with chipping. Potentially, if you're not careful, you're going to go too far. And it's very difficult to fix, which is why personally when I do it, I would do it entirely with a paintbrush. But that wasn't the point of this exercise. But that is a very good example of where you can... If you press too hard, you're not going to get the mark that you like. So less is more here because there is another step after this. So the next step with this is we need to make these chips a bit more believable. So the problem is, is if you just have random chunks of paint off this model from the sponge, what you end up with is something that looks a little bit odd. And that's because you would have more chips, more scratches around the actual sharp edges itself. So we need to make that happen. So with a fairly small brush, as long as you can get a nice point with the towards the tip of the brush, but the side of the brush, you're going to tap that brush along the edge of the armor plates. And what this does is it will give you a nice inconsistent line to show that potentially those edges have received more marks than anywhere else. Now it is worth noting the particular color that I've used for this is Games Workshop Rhinox Hide. It's I, I I really like GW Rhinox Hide as a, as a nice brown paint and I think it works really well when it comes to weathering yellow armor. But this is a really important stage because this is what will sell the result. The other thing that you can do, which uh, I'm not going to show, is you can also go and highlight all of the underneath of these chips if you want to do. It's not something that I did on this, but it can give you a nice three-dimensional result. So I'm going to show you how we paint faces really quick for a tabletop army, or rather how I do. The face in this case is base coated with Vallejo model color basic skin tone. As long as it's a rough skin tone, it doesn't really matter too much. And then what I've done is GW, I believe it's Reichlin Flesh Tone Wash. I've layered the whole face in that. Now, what you need to remember with this is you don't want those puddles on the face. So once I've done that, I go back with a clean brush and I absorb 
those really big puddles of wash because the problem is if you leave those puddles it just ends up with this really big mess so all you want it to do is to kind of sit in those recesses and pick out those shapes the process after that is we're going to go with gw agrax earthshade so this is the brown wash and just under the cheeks because they're really prominent on gw sculpts so that's that's that just works for me and around the eye sockets towards the nose i put a small amount of gw agrax earthshade and that makes that area slightly darker now you need to be really aware with washes you don't want um you don't want to leave those puddles use those washes in a controlled fashion so remove any of the excess wash all you want this wash the first wash there is to pick out the details of the face but then more importantly what it's going to do is it's going to tint the tone of the face to something a bit more fleshy so now that we've done that the next stage is we just need to define the face i've stuck the head on at this point just so i can see how the head interacts with the rest of the highlights on the armor but i've gone back to that vallejo model color basic skin tone i've thinned it down quite a bit probably two parts maybe three parts water to one part paint remove the excess of my brush and then i'm pushing my highlight areas and i'm defining the shape so in this case i chose to highlight towards the right hand side of his face just because i quite liked the idea of that bright highlight area on the shoulder pads and then it kind of matched the the head um, and i've also going to pick out the, the cheekbones on his face and just above the eyebrows and his nose just because that will get rid of the majority of any muddiness that we might have left over or any almost like the the washes can leave a very dirty finish so that removes a lot of that and then i just end up painting on the eyebrows black and that's it nice and simple that's how i painted the face on this model i didn't even do the eyes on this I wanted to show that you could still get a nice result without even bother painting the eyes on a marine because they are incredibly difficult to do for a huge amount of people. Um, so I wanted to show that you could still get a nice result without needing to paint the eyes. Sometimes it's just worth leaving them. And that's it that's how we painted the imperial fist is a it always looks easier when someone else does it on camera but as long as you take your time with the first few this process can become incredibly quick it's far from perfect but when you're army painting it really doesn't need to be an amazing finish it just needs to look good from afar I hope this video is helpful as always feel free to let me know what you think if you've got requests for what you want me to see what you want to see painted on stream then leave it in the comments below and thanks for watching